This is your announcer, Ed Hurley, inviting you to stay tuned for Psychodrama, next on most of these same stations. This is the Continental Broadcasting System. Psychodrama. The name is Holmes. That's about all I can tell you because the rest is a blur. I, I seem to have left my memory in another town or another time. I, I can't say for sure. All that I can remember is the clinging fragrance of lavender and, and a girl's face that keeps turning away from my mind's eye, turning away as if I had somehow betrayed her. I found myself walking through a doorway. I felt dizzy. Doctor, I... Yes, what is it? I'm very busy. Oh, my God, my dear boy, are you all right? <laughs> well, you've chosen a good place to collapse, on the couch of the most brilliant psychiatrist Leipzig has ever known. Perhaps if you were to tell me all about it. Yes, maybe that would help. Doctor, they're, they're all trying to kill me. Ah, yes, and, and who exactly are they? I don't know. I can't remember. It's just something I, I feel instinctively. Uh, could I have one of those cigarettes? Ah, but of course. I've never seen cigarettes like these before. Black paper with silver tips. Are they Russian? Uh, yes, yes, Russian. Yeah. Well, that's better, Dad. I mean, Doc. <laughs> I guess that's Freudian. And now maybe you'll be kind enough to tell me where you've hidden the wax figurine of the Kaiser. Not you, too. That's right, Master Rupert, and this gun proves the depth of my sincerity. Listen, I've been overworked lately, recording an LP for Epic Records. That and... cover story may have worked on Grossman and Suez, but I happen to know that you are a private detective. I am? Yes, and seeing as we are 37 stories up in a locked room, I would not try any tricks. I won't try any tricks, Doctor, but if you don't mind, I think I'll try the window. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> What a tremendous stroke of luck. I've landed on a foam rubber trolley car. Trolley car? Then I must be in San Francisco. Yeah, that's the waterfront up ahead. I'll just hop off here. That girl over there, staring into the water, she looks familiar. Maybe I should ask her... Funny, I seem to be talking to myself. Then why not talk to me, Slim? There she was. Girl, you never brought home the mother. Her looks were straight off a calendar, the kind of calendar that gave pool halls a bad name. Her dress was poured on her like syrup on a stack of pancakes. Some stack. Got a cigarette, Slim? I'm afraid not. Would you like some sugarless gum? I don't take nothing from no one that I can't give back. Sounds eminently fair to me. I think. Someday, that... when you've done what I've done, and you've seen what I've seen, You'll realize you can't buy love. However, it is possible to rent me. Well, uh, how do I... Uh... I'm not hard to come by, Slim. All you have to do is whistle. You do know how to whistle, don't you? Sure. <whistles> she stormed off, leaving the heavy perfume of lavender permeating the fog around me. I was alone. On the contrary, sir. You are far from being alone. My name is Grossman, sir, and I wish to talk to you about a certain wax figurine of the Kaiser. Now that we are alone... Oh, on the contrary, gentlemen, you are far from being alone. What's all this? Ah, my old companion from Istanbul. We meet again, Mr. G, and I believe for the same purpose. I hate to interrupt a reunion, but... Oh, forgive me, Mr. Holmes, sir. Uh, my name is Carl Suez. And I've been representing a competitive bidder for the legendary Kaiser statuette. <laughs> well, then let's, uh, let's talk about the statue. <laughs> Gad, sir, you are a character. Well, then, by all means, let's talk about the statue. May I remind you that uh, my client is prepared to pay the sum in the amount of 35 dollars for information which will lead... Come, come, Carl. Shall we not meld our mutual interests? <laughs> Uh, by all means, Mr. G, I, I was going to make the same suggestion imminently. 
then perhaps, Mr. Holmes, you'll be more impressed by the color of our guns. I don't think so, fellas. You see, I've got all of you covered. It was her, all right. Without a word, she waved me into a nearby sedan and pushed the speedometer until we had reached a desolate area outside the city. Last I spoke. Well, are you going to tell me... I did you a favor. I thought maybe you'd return it. Is that all you want? Oh, can't you see when somebody's crazy about you? So crazy that they... Oh, we're here. Talk about old dark houses. My uncle lives here in this foreboding manor that still carries a curse on whoever spends the night under its craggy roof and in which all his family have died suspicious deaths under strange circumstances of a gruesome and revolting nature. Anyway, call me a fool if you like. But I fear for his life. You mean... Yes, I think someone is trying to murder him. Well, here we are. Good evening, Miss Leland. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mason. Is my uncle at home and well? Oh, yes and no, Miss Leland. Yes and no, Mason? He is indeed home, sir, but he is lamentably quite dead. <gasps> Are there any suspects, Mason? Uh, yes, sir. I've taken the liberty of asking them to stay in the study, where they all claim to have been at the time of the murder. Uh, perhaps you... Uh... Well, I'll do what I can. Uh, shall we go to the study, sir? Rupert. Do you have a plan? Yes, I do. Leland, I'm, I'm going to pretend that I know the killer's identity and do the whole detective sums up speech. Just as I'm apparently about to reveal the name of the murderer, I, I want you to switch off all the lights in the room. With any luck, we'll catch the killer in the act of escape. Brilliant. Well, congratulations, sir. Let's face them in the study. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Holmes, the celebrated detective. Thank you, Mason, and I'd appreciate it if you would stand over by the fire. Leland? Yes? Since you weren't here at the time of the murder, would you please sit at the piano and play whatever music comes to mind? Ladies and gentlemen, one of us is a killer. I know his identity, uh, or her identity, uh, if he is a woman, which I'm not saying she is. You remember my saying, Leland, that I had been staring some clue in the face. Well, now I know what that clue was. And now I will reveal to you all that the murderer's name is... Who turned out the light? <laughs> Good work, Leland. I'll just turn on the lights and we'll have caught ourselves a... Good Lord. They've all been murdered. Wait a minute. If they're all dead then I must be the killer. I fear your deduction is not quite correct, sir. <laughs> Grossman, <laughs> Suez, you did it. Yes, I'm afraid my associate has managed to kill everyone in the room but you, sir. Sorry, Mr. G. I don't understand. Why kill me? I know nothing exactly, about... Exactly, sir. And we wish to continue your state of sublime ignorance by dispatching you permanently to oblivion. You know too much about our quest to be allowed to survive. Yes, and we are indeed fortunate that you are now standing on a trap door. I am told you'll die of shock long before now, you... Now, wait, So wait. pull the handle of the clock. Please, dear God, I beg of you, don't... Adieu, do Mr. Holmes. <laughs> You've chosen a good place to collapse on the couch of the most brilliant psychiatrist Leipzig has ever known. Perhaps if you were to tell me all about it. Yes, maybe that would help. Doctor, they're, they're all trying to kill me. Ah, yes, and, and who exactly are they? I don't know. I can't remember. It's just something I, I feel instinctively. Uh, could I have one of those cigarettes? Ah, but of course. I've, I've seen cigarettes like these before. Black paper with silver tips. Are they Russian?